We respectfully request the Sangha great virtues for the sake of this assembly and all living beings. Please turn the wonderful Dharma wheel to teach and guide us how to end birth and death, leave suffering and attain bliss, and quickly realize non-birth. Kung dun dai du tang tin vi thu pha poi kam Amish the blessed, noble, and perfectly enlightened one. Namo Sadanto Sichedo Ye Alahudi San Mio San Putosye. Namo Tadakta to Yadaja La De Tamil Nambo Da Toa. The unsurpassed, profound, subtle, and wonderful Dharma in a hundred thousand million aeons is difficult to encounter. Now that I'm able to see and hear, I will receive and maintain it. I vow to fathom the thus come one's true and actual principles. Wushang Sheng Sheng Wei Miao Fa Bai Chien one O Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, Great Master Ching Liang, Great Master Shen Hua. All good monks and nuns and all good new advisors are made of all. Chu Fo Pu Sa, Ching Yang Ta Shi, Shi Fu Shang Ren, Go Wei, Chu Cha Ren, Go Wei, Shang Chi Shi, Mito Fo. Chi Phật Bồ Tát Khấn Thưa, Thanh Lương Đại Sư Hồ Thượng Thiên Hóa, Quý Thầy Cô và Kỳ Vị Thịnh Thư Thức A Như Đà Phật. Hello everyone, today is the 17th already of March 2024. Uh, today we are coming to you from Dharma Chaitri Temple in San Francisco. Uh, we are uh, continuing to discuss the first chapter of the Avatamsaka Sutra. Uh, the World Rulers is a title. It uh, describes, it gives us uh, its name dropping and uh, uh, and a brief explanation of uh, uh, their status and their uh, their uh, um, uh, their uh, what they do, why they're there. Uh, so we're on slide 528. Let's continue. Celestial King Banner of Stars gain a passage into liberation of drawing near all Buddhas during their lifetime in the world, and observing the skill and means they use to tame and subdue sentient beings. Sing Su Chuang Tian Wang, De Yi Chie Fo Chu Xing, Xian Qing Jing Guan Cha, Tiao Fu Zhong Shen, Fang Bian Jie Tuo Men. Okay, these are the, uh, the uh, heavenly rulers of the fourth desire heaven. They're up there. Huh? In, uh, in, in, the, uh, in space. Uh, so it's a fourth level of desire heaven, and uh, they're very happy. So each heaven has different characteristics, and uh, as we study more on the sutra, the Buddha will then 
compassionately give us, fill in more information for us in later chapters about these heavens. And it's kind of uh, insightful because, uh, because it's, this is a kind of uh, knowledge and vision that the Buddhas have that uh, ordinary people can never be able to um, develop. Uh, only Buddhas have this kind of, uh, of the kind of wisdom and powers. Okay, so this particular Savile King here is um, uh, is called Banner of Stars. Uh, uh, stars. He he uh, he is a uh, very bright up there. Uh, and how did he become enlightened? Hmm. He become enlightened, that's the meaning of gain a passage into liberation. Gain a passage into liberation, meaning that there are many ways for you to become enlightened. No? And to gain a passage into liberation, a passage means that you go through some sort of entrance. Or in Buddhism, we call it, call it Dharma door, meaning that the, your method of practice that you focus on, for example, nowadays in Korea, the, uh, uh, the, the um, uh, Buddhists in Korea who prefer to, when they meditate, to do the Huato. So Huato would be a uh, Dharma door or method of practice that will enable them to gain a passage into liberation. Okay, as you can imagine, when you hear the word gain a passage, meaning there are many, many passages. Okay, in the world of Chan alone, there are countless Dharma doors. In the world of Pure Land, there are also many, many Dharma doors. Uh, in the world of Tantras, you probably heard of it already. There are tons of Tantras in the world as well. So each Tantra, is can be considered considered as a dharma door and you can gain a passage through these dharma doors okay is that clear so what he's telling you is that there are many ways to skin the cat if you will it's not just one simple way and so that's why in Mahayana, great teachers like my, like Master, my late Chinese master, Master Xunhua, he taught you can tell the, the level of wisdom by the number of Dharma doors that they, uh, they teach. Okay? Uh, because when you gain a passage into liberation, you are sort of like entering a world of enlightenment. Uh, and so, uh, so many ways to get there, okay? But once you get there, uh, and uh, eventually you, uh, your, your wisdom, your enlightenment level is high enough, then you see you begin through this entry door here, you begin to understand all the other passages as well. It's not automatic, it takes time. You first need to be, uh, become enlightened, meaning that gain a passage. And then these beings here, these celestial kings here, after they gain a passage, after they became enlightened, and what he's referring to is actually pretty high level enlightenment, okay? Through this way, okay? That we'll, we discuss uh, shortly. That at this sort of Dharma doors here enables them to open high level wisdoms. Okay, it's way beyond reciting Buddha's name, way beyond Huato, way beyond all these things. All the various Dhamma doors that the monks and nuns are preaching nowadays. And that's a function of, the, of this Avatam Saka Sutra. It's a reminder to all of us that there's many, many more Dhamma doors that you, can, you need to practice and you can practice in order to reach uh, much higher levels of wisdom than just a huato or just uh, just breathing or reciting Buddha's name alone. Okay? It's a big, big, wide world out there. So what did he do? Hmm. He, in order to open his, his 
current level. This is describing his current level of wisdom. When you learn uh, Pure Land, we teach you to recite the Buddha's name, okay? And you do it well enough, eventually you can become enlightened. Actually, you can get very, very far. Uh, sometimes, some people can get a lot higher than the Hua Tao or the Chan school by, by reciting a Buddha's name, okay? That's possible, because that Dharma door is very profound, okay? Unfortunately, most pe people get sidetracked and, and uh, they don't realize uh, they never could, could uh, discover the depth of these Dharma doors. Uh, or for example, another example I can give you is um, breathing. Uh, uh, a couple of days ago, few, last few, last, uh, this past weekend, someone asked me, will you teach breathing? I said, no, I won't teach you. It's because uh, the, cur the, the, the current method of breathing as taught by the monks and nuns out there, or lay people out there, are, uh, are, they call it mindfulness of breathing and so forth. They are, uh, they are uh, not ultimate. And so, uh, so, and I, so my answer is no, I won't teach you breathing because, uh, uh, because, um, because it, uh, it's, um, I prefer not to. When you get a high level, I teach how to breathe differently. Okay? But what I'm trying to tell, tell them is that even breathing, meditation breathing, breath meditation, you can go very, very far as well. Okay? That Dharma door alone. But unfortunately, at a low level that's being taught right now by the uh, scholars, by the Hinayana people, it uh, it's, um, causes uh, issues will, uh, are self-limiting. That's why I don't like to teach breathing anymore. All right? So, so my point is here for these beings, uh, it sounds simple, but this is describing uh, the kinds of Dharma doors or practices that the high-level bodhisattvas and mahasattvas have to practice in order to get there. So it's way beyond us. Okay, it's not just just Chan Chan uh, in terms of uh, Hua To or uh, Wan Yin uh, Dharma door or breathing or whatever. Okay. So this is, this is why it's insightful. So what did he do? In order to reach his level of enlightenment, his current level of enlightenment of a Mahasattva, he's very, very high level. Uh, so what he does to do is he makes sure to draw near all Buddhas during the time in the world. Here's what happens. Buddhas periodically appear in the world. When? when it's time to do so. What they do is uh, they patiently wait until all the conditions are ripe, meaning, what does it mean conditions ripened? Uh, meaning that all the beings that they can save are gathered together at the appropriate time. So that's why right now, uh, Maitreya Bodhisattva, the next Buddha that will be, who will be coming in about 16 million years to our world, he's patiently waiting up there in this heaven, this fourth desire heaven in the inner court, where he's waiting and waiting uh, until uh, all the beings that he can save uh, are able to be there when, when he becomes a Buddha in 60 million years or so. Okay? And that's what happens to every single Buddha that appears in the world, that process, where actually they have to wait. Okay? All of them have to wait until it's the right time for them to do it, to become a Buddha. So, so this celestial king, banner of stars here, would uh, make sure that every single Buddha 
as you can imagine, is mind-blowing. Every single Buddha that appears in every single world, a world here is a Buddhist term for galaxy. So there's countless galaxies in the universe. So this particular heavenly king here, banner of stars, he would wait. And as soon as there's a Buddha that appears in the world and starts teaching, he would appear as well himself. To do what? To be a disciple of the Buddha. Okay. And what did he do? First thing he does when he's there is to observe the Dharma they speak. So they listen to the Dharma. That's number one. For them to reach high level of wisdom, you have to listen to the Dharma. Not just them, us as well. This is why we lecture regularly uh, every single weekend, practically. Okay? That's our tradition. Uh, as most monks and nuns, eventually, I'm... You have to bide your time because I'm giving you time to develop skills and knowledge. And eventually, you have to, you have to speak Dharma yourself. Okay? All the monks and nuns. Yeah. Not this lifetime, the next lifetime. And that's what you're supposed to do. This is one of the most important things that monks and nuns do. To speak the Dharma. So that by the time you become a Buddha, they perfected the speaking of the Dharma. Because of, of the perfection, uh, there's no better uh, place to learn, no one else better to learn from than the Buddhas when they speak the Dharma. And that's one of the most powerful ways of helping living beings end suffering and attain bliss. Okay, so all monks, all nuns, you eventually uh, have to learn to speak Dharma. All right, the sooner the better. Okay, so just between us, I'll give you 10 more years. And then by the time I'm, you know, before I retire to I take my retirement and collect Social Security, uh, 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 you have to start speaking a Dharma and listen to you. Mm -hmm. I will tune in on on uh, all night, okay, and ask you questions. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So, Buddhas, when they start speaking Dharma, this celestial king here uh, would physically be there. Draw near is physically be there. So, you can imagine all the various galaxies in the world countless galaxies in the world. Imagine, think about the, this, the kind of power he has. He would go to every single, he's able to go to every single Buddha land in the universe and listen to the Buddha's Dharma. You're not impressed. Oh, oh, they're not impressed. Sounds so trivial to you, huh? This is incredible spiritual powers. Incredible. Okay? Mm. And so, while Buddhas preach sermon, they give sermons and talk Dharma, he, this king here, shows up and listens to them, all of them, all Buddhas, all the Buddhas, okay? And not only, not only when you listen to the Dharma, what the Buddha is speaking, uh, it's certain teaching, that is the most advanced certain teaching there is, okay? That's mastery of certain teaching for the Buddhas when they speak Dharma. Okay? And not only that, they also, he also did something that's very important. 
that he has a chance because he's so near to the Buddha, okay? Observe the expedience that Buddhas use to tame and subdue living beings. Meaning that sensing beings or living beings are very difficult, are very hard-headed. They don't listen. And therefore, in order for Buddhas to help and help living beings, they have to use expedience or skill in means. Mm. This is, requires a trem tremendous level of wisdom uh, in order to tame and subdue sentient beings. Okay? To tame is necessary because you take out uh, their uh, the ex ex excess uh, energy, like the kids screaming. When the kids are screaming, okay, they don't listen, do they? So, so that's why uh, that's why you have you have to tame them so that you keep them in check. You rein them in, okay. Mm. So, for example, some of the kids here they uh, used to he used to uh, scream a lot when he first came. Yeah, okay. So, uh, so that's why uh, he has to be tamed a little bit. <laughs> All right. See how now now how how uh, calm he is. Yeah? And um, and uh, and subdue uh, subdue is uh, requires you to be stronger. Okay, uh, you have to you have to uh, like uh, subdue pulling the reins of that horse. When you you actually uh, have to uh, be stronger. Okay, have a way to. Uh, to to overcome their obstruct their their objections. Okay, to so sense in beings in Buddhism, the wisdom has it. In order for you to help sense in beings, you have to learn to tame and subdue them. That's the tip. Not to sense in beings. Hear it as subdue your children. Subdue your subordinates. Hmm? That's what it takes in order to help. Okay, so it requires wisdom. All right? Skill in means. Skill in means is something that bodhisattvas who are at high levels oh, become more and more skilled at doing, at deploying. Uh, so, skill in means means that, and I give you an example of my master, uh, Master Xinhua. Uh, I looked at him the way he does things, uh, I don't understand. That's called skill in means. It's not what you think. And ultimately, uh, these high-level beings of great wisdom, uh, we can't understand. So it doesn't have to make sense to me. That's one of the things I learned over the years with him, is that it does not have to make sense to me at all. Okay? Because it's all skill in means. We cannot understand. Okay, here's what happens. Why, 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 why skill, skill in means is so difficult to understand. I give you an analogy of, uh, of, uh, of the range. Okay, if you take, uh, you take something and apply it. Uh, to only, let's say, uh, the city of San Francisco, okay, which works, but it may not work outside the city of San Francisco. Okay, so that's why th there is a range of efficacy. Uh, whereas, you know, so that's why uh, people with limited vision, limited wisdom, uh, think they understand, demand to understand. For example, scientists demand to facts for facts. 
mm, to verify facts. And invariably, these scientists uh, know eventually that uh, it can only validate it. The theorems, the theory can only validate it within the domain. Outside the domain, it cannot. Okay, so there's limitations on, 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 these, uh, on these processes. And that's why the skill and means of the Buddhas, we cannot understand them. The low level people, people cannot understand the skill and means employed by people of higher levels because our, our range, our domain is much more limited okay, than theirs. We don't understand why they do certain things, simply because we can't see far enough. Okay? Mm. And so, any questions about this? It's different world. Yes, eight. Uh, Master, I have a question not related to this. It's actually from Cordelia. Yes. Uh, so Cordelia wanted to ask, uh, Amitofo Master, the seeds we produced, do they get more and more indestructible as our level increase? If yes, should we renew our vows as our level progresses until we reach Buddhahood? I'm sorry, the first part. Could you repeat, please? Uh, the seeds we produced, do they get more and more indestructible as our level increases? Um, no. Okay. Uh, here's what happens. When you create karmas, that's a seed that's put in there. Okay. And so the conditions are there. And so you don't need to worry about increasing the quality of the seeds. What we do is that we create more seeds continue to create more seats. Okay, so as your level of samadhi increases, you create more seats, the better qualities naturally. Okay, uh, the more seats, the better. Very much like when you don't have any skills, your level is low, um, then the, the evil seeds you create is, uh, is uh, damaging, but it's a lot more damaging when your skill levels are higher. So therefore, uh, at low level, you know, your evil seeds are there, but at the high level, the seeds are even more dangerous, much, much more devastating. Okay, same thing. At the, on the goodness side, low level, your good is limited. The more you improve, the good, the, the more, the far greater good you can have. All right? Anything else? Five thirty, celestial king, wonderful adornment. Gain a passage into liberation of fully knowing sensing beings' thoughts in a single thought and manifesting according to their potentials. Miao Zhuang Yan Tian Wang, De Yi Nian Xi Zhi Zhong Shen Xin, Sui Ji Yin Xian Jie Tuo Men. Okay. Here's what this, guy, uh, this uh, celestial king does. Okay. He sits there in Samadhi. And then, and then uh, he strikes up a thought. He says, I want to know what the two little boys in, at DTT are thinking of right now. Okay? So that's fully knowing sense of being thought is in single thought. That's what it means. He says, he decides to help these two boys, for example. He says, he sits there and says, okay, what is that they're thinking? Meaning what? What is that they want? Not thinking. What do they want? Huh? You see, 
it's abstract, a little bit abstract, the way that the the uh, the Buddha, uh, the the Dharma is spoken to you. But this is actually in in action. Yeah? It's like it's like what do they want? They say they want a teddy bear, okay? Oh, what? Actually, he's actually listening. <laughs> Okay. They want guns, okay, and so forth. And so, so meaning that he directs his thoughts on the specific living being, a group of beings there, and says, what do they want? So that shows that he's able to read their thoughts. Okay, that's a spiritual power. So in a single thought, meaning he strike up a thought, okay? He says, I want to help these two. It's not like he's thinking, no, he says, I, I want to help those, the children at DTT on Sunday, March 17th, which is St. Patty's Day. That's why they're in green, by the way, you Asian people. Hmm? Okay, mm. you're gonna give him green beer today? No, oh, so boring, parents. Uh, anyway, uh, this is a long time since I last drank green beer, and I remember you know, after lunch the tongue is green. Mm. Never mind. Mm. And so, so he, he thinks and says, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna." The thought in single thought means I want to help these two boys today, okay? And so he can tell what they want. And because he can see what they want, okay? And he would then, what does he do? Manifest according to their potentials. Meaning that he would manifest because he sees the boys as, as uh, what they're doing right now. Uh, uh, Okay, it's, it's no point in trying to speak Dharma to them. They would say, would not be interested. So potential means, what can they absorb? How can I interest them? How can I capture their attention? Okay, so it manifests, for example, uh, gray you know, a green pen of bear for this boy here. And that's what he means by manifesting according to their potential, so that he connects with them. He's drawn, he's drawn to the Dharma. Yes, in order to help living beings, you have to have something that they want. Okay, uh, that's what he does, and so uh, so that uh, enables him to develop the powers to do his job right now in the fourth desire heaven. Okay, and when he's up there, he's known as wonderful doorman, meaning that he's very adorned. He's very. Uh, cool to look at. Okay. Five thirty-two. At that time, celestial king contentment received the Buddha's awesome might, contemplated the multitudes of the heavens contentment, and spoke the following verse. 尔时，知足天王，成佛威力，普观一切知足天众。Okay, uh, it's uh, worthwhile to remind you that this assembly or this group of, of beings who were gathered there to listen to Shakyamuni Buddha uh, speak of this sutra here. There's this countless, countless celestial kings from this fourth desire heaven. Because there's so many of them, uh, uh, this version of this uh, sutra only lists out ten of them. 
Okay, and then and by order of of stature, the first one listed is the most powerful one. So this this is the first one listed the celestial king contentment. Okay, so he uh, as a leader, the most influential celestial king of that, all the celestial kings, the countless celestial kings from a fourth desire heaven, which is called the heavens of contentment. They all gathered there to listen to the Buddha's sermons. Uh, and so this one here is a leader, would uh, use, would, would, uh, would um, base on the Buddha's support, spiritual power support, speak the following verses to repeat the teachings okay so the teaching now is important enough that it has to be repeated through a verse okay so it would brings up slightly different angles to reinforce the teaching 534 the thus come one vast and great pervades the dharma realm towards all sentient beings he is completely equal and level 如来广大变法界,于诸众生悉平等. Okay. 535. Thus come one is one of the ten titles of the Buddha. Yeah. Actually, countless titles, but we only have to memorize ten titles. Okay. And thus come one is, um, is one of the Rulai. Mm. That's how he came. He came here, the one who came here that way. Okay? Uh, that's how he chose to come. Uh, vast and great. Vast here uh, refers to the range. Remember, we sensing beings have limited range. It's only so much we can, our mind can muster, can conceive of. All right? So that's what vast here, meaning that uh, it's a reminder that the Buddha's perspective is very vast. It's vaster than ours. Okay? It's a reminder of uh, our limitations versus the Buddha's. So it's, when it says vast is that it's expensive okay and great uh, great here refers to a certification of the great results he is great because he's recognized by others as great recognized by who by all the buddhas as great by his peers okay so great here refers to a historically uh, verified, historically confirmed, validated greatness, great value. Okay? Uh, pervades the Dharma realm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the, this, thus come one vast and great here, his vastness and greatness is pervades the Dharma realm. That's the scope of his influence. Okay? Mm -hmm. Towards all sentient beings, he is completely uh, equal and level. Mm. It's not completely. Uh, uh, in Chinese, this is this is where uh, this is where uh, sometimes the translation kind of uh, falls short. Uh, uh, C here is not completely uh, is all. Okay, C is 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 uh, is all, not completely. Uh, uh, all meaning that all inclusive. Okay, completely is not the same concept to me. Okay, uh, so all, uh, C is all. Uh, 
but complete is okay. We, we can we, we can go with it. Uh, equal and level. Mm. Uh, again, the translation here, uh, that's what my master's disciples chose to translate as equal and, and level. It's okay. Well, actually, the Chinese meaning to me is much more profound. Uh, and Chinese uh, conceptually says ping. Ping here is flat. Flat meaning that um, he sees us when the when the the thus come one looks at us, whether it's a boy or the other boy or the adult or the teddy bear, it's equal. It's flat. It's the same to them. No discrimination at all. Okay? So ping is the same. He looks at men, women are the same, it as the same, adults is the same, okay, children are the same, okay, blacks is the same, white is the same, it's all the same to them. There's no discrimination whatsoever. That's what ping is is fat, is flat. No high and lows. It doesn't say like in, in the Asian cultures, we we uh, we prefer male over female. I mean, it used to be in my generation. Now I'm told that now uh, the females are, are preferred over the males. No, it's not true. Not yet. <laughs> not in my lifetime. I'm kidding. Okay, so, so that's why ping, ping is flat. Okay, it, it's refers, which is, which is which is connected to the fact that why, why in our landscape, this mountain, this valleys, is because our minds are not ping, are not level, are not flat. We have discrimination, we prefer this, we don't like that, we prefer this, we dislike that. That's why it's up and down, okay? It's not flat. Whereas Buddha's, his level of wisdom, he's totally, he's, 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 uh, he's uh, looks at everything as flat, as equal, and tang. Uh, tang is level. Uh, level here, uh, they, the, way, the way they explain it is equal and level, but actually uh, level here, uh, to me, Tang here is that I'm this I'm with you. Buddha says you and me are one. That's the wisdom we're talking about. The free from from uh, they they're we are all one and the same. Tang is, is no different. I'm Buddha, so are you. You suffering, so do I. Okay? I'm no different from you. Tang is, we're all the same. We're all together. Uh, agree or uh, you disagree with this with my interpretation of Chinese. I know too many Chinese here in Northern California, so I have to be careful. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> Not counting children. Please speak up. I'm, I take a lot of liberties, okay, for the heck of it. So far, so good. So this is, this is what makes Buddhists different from us, okay? Ping is they don't discriminate. Tang is that they're together with us. They don't see them as I'm Buddha, you not Buddha. I'm monk, you not monk. That's a kind of distinction is which is meant meant by tang here to me. Okay, I eat the same thing as you. I don't want any any special treatment. Yes, six. Just my personal take, I feel Deng is actually equal. How about Ping? 
Ping level. Hmm. Same thing. Ping is level. Then is equal. Then we should have explained it as level and equal. And, and the translation actually is completely equal in the level, which is ping then. But the the both level and equal. Yeah. Which is a is a is a closer. Okay, let's hear from the other Chinese. Level. No objections. Okay, then we keep level and equal. We f we flip it around. Okay, that's fine. That works for me too. So uh, level again is impartial, and equal is the same. Okay, equal. <laughs> okay. Thank you. 536, universally responding to the multitudes, he expounds the wonderful doors, causing them to enter inconceivable pure dharmas. Okay. 537. Hmm. Universally responding to the multitudes. Okay. Uh, universally says that is nowhere he's not willing to go. Okay, for example, here uh, in uh, in the city, uh, the places I rather not go, like Oakland, downtown, a uh, Chinatown, Oakland, um, my big Asian looking, I would not go to Chinatown, Oakland. Not funny to you, never mind. Hmm. Uh, and so, uh, universally that means nowhere he can't go or he's not willing to go in order to respond to in is to, to go and to in response to request or need to help of uh, the multitudes. Okay? And when he responds, what does he do? To help them, he uh, expounds the wonderful doors. Wonderful doors refers to the methods to practice the Dharma doors. Man door is short for Dharma doors. And wonderful means that it's a lot deeper than you think. Remember earlier today, uh, is it earlier today or this morning? I don't remember anymore. I explained to you that. Even the breathing, Dharma door, uh, is wonderful because it's very profound, it's very deep. It's not the way that is explained by the, um, the current teachers out there, monks or nuns or lay people. The way they explain that breathing uh, meditation technique is not wonderful. It's very shallow, okay? So that tells you that with something as wonderful as breathing, uh, meditation on breathing can be expounded at a very, very low level as being done right now with the Dharma door of uh, breathing. Uh, meditation on breathing right there is actually a wonderful Dharma door. It's very, very profound. Okay, so that's the nature of the myriad doors uh, that in Buddhism that's available to us to teach and train our people. They're all wonderful, it's because they're so profound, they're so, they produce uh, um, wonderful results, okay? Causing them to enter inconceivable pure dharmas. Inconceivable. There's a purpose for doing this. Uh, you, you can talk all you want, but ultimately uh, we try to bring 
the multitudes, okay, into, to enter into pure dharmas and inconceivable. And so you have these, these, uh, these concepts here of inconceivable, meaning that we cannot possibly explain to you how beneficial it is, how wonderful it is. The wonderful benefit you gain from these Dharma doors are way beyond your comprehension. We cannot possibly explain to you. Okay? Mm. That's the word inconceivable, which is a concept that is, re it is uh, uh, repeated uh, throughout this, uh, this uh, sutra because it's the, the state or, or the realm of the Avatamsaka Sutra is inconceivable. It, way, it has a way of, of, uh, of uh, expanding way beyond our imaginations. Okay? See, in other words, it helps us expand our mind. Okay, when, when you find it inconceivable, when something finds, is, is, is described as inconceivable by someone, that means his mind has been expanded a little bit. They say, wow, I didn't know that before. And then you look closely again, it's still inconceivable, meaning the range has been expanded. That's this Flower Norman Sutra purpose. That's why you keep on hearing the word inconceivable. All right? Ah, and pure dharmas. Oh. Pure dharmas. Oh. This is the dharmas that will enable you to attain utmost purity. Yeah. There's no more defilements. And uh, uh, that's what Buddhism is about. Buddhism is about uh, uh, not success. The, the criteria for uh, attainment is uh, purity, like nirvana. These pure dharmas enable you to enter nirvana. So it's a reminder that happiness, nirvana is, is the the ideal happiness, if you will. You need to use the worldly word happiness, concept of happiness. Nirvana is ultimate happiness. High level of happiness can only achieve through purity. All right? 538. The Buddha's body appears everywhere in the ten directions without attachment, without obstructions, it cannot be grasped. Okay. Mm. Commentary. Mm. Buddha's body appears everywhere in the ten directions. And then in from Master Shinho's tech teaching and transforming all living beings, causing them to bring forth in the past result for Bodhi, accomplish Bodhi's fusion. Okay? Uh, no, that's not uh, what this is about. What he's describing is that uh, this Buddha had this body called Dharma body which is pervasive and it is everywhere in the ten directions. Bluntly speaking, what is this Dharma body? It's everything you see. This glass, this wood, this building, this teddy bear, you, me, everything is Buddha's Dharma body. All right? That's his body. This is our bodies. When you become a Buddha, you see that your body is this universe, which includes what? All the Buddhist teachings. Every single thing in this universe is a Dharma body. All right? Uh, 
and uh, ten directions. So that's only your conceptually thinking of, but also ten directions. It expands in all directions. All right. Uh, what's another aspect of this uh, Buddha body here? Is without attachment, without obstructions, it cannot be grasped. And here, now I agree with Master Shua's uh, elaboration. Without attachment, Master Shua explains it as true emptiness. Meaning, the Buddha is attached to nothing. Okay? Uh, he he doesn't he doesn't grasp depend on anything. When you talk about attachment, there's a dependency. Hmm? We depend on our wife for love and comfort. Hmm? Okay, uh, so so that's uh, that's uh, that's the nature of attachment. We still have greed. We still have needs. That's why you, we are attached to our needs. Okay? Uh, so, without attachment, meaning they're free of needs. Okay? They have no needs. They have no desires. Okay? And that's why it's called true emptiness. It's zero. It depends on nothing. And yet, when you depend on nothing, then you have everything. That's it. The other side of the equation. True emptiness equals wonderful existence. The equation has two sides, depending on which side you look at. It's the same thing. Okay? One side is that it's free. It has no attachment, therefore, is zero in here. Attachment is, is, is without attachment, meaning that you have nothing. Nothing sticks, okay? You throw it at him, it drops. Nothing sticks. Doesn't get stained, okay? For example, here, we have something called dust. Yeah? We need to dust our stuff, our houses, our furniture constantly, because the dust settles on them. And that's a proof that a manifestation of our attachments. If your attachments, dust will collect and will show where our attachments are. Okay? Without attachments, then where does it dust settle? Nothing. It cannot settle on anything. That's why it's called true emptiness. So far, so good. The other side of the equation is wonderful existence. Okay. Wonderful existence is true emptiness is nothing there. Wonderful existence is everything is there. Not just there, but everything is wonderful and there. kind of a beautiful terminology is there and it's wonderful. When it's wonderful, then are there any obstructions? When you're happy, okay, the analogy is when you're happy, you, you can, you, you, uh, nothing bothers you. Yeah? He said, I'm so happy. You so mean to me. You insulted me. I'm so happy today, honey. I forgive you. Okay, I ignore you. I ignore your insults because you're so happy. That's why that's what wonderful comes in. Your insult is also wonderful. 
Your mood is so wonderful. Your moods are also wonderful. That's a wonderful existence. Nothing bothers you. Everything is wonderful. One side of the equation: no attachment. If you have no attachment, then it's also wonderful existence. You have no attachment. You have zero here. Then you have also have everything on this side, depending on which side you look at. That's why true emptiness is wonderful existence, and wonderful existence is true emptiness. That's the Avatamsaka concept. How do you use it? Hmm? What's the practical aspects of this? Let's say you're depressed. You feel depressed. Just in case, I'm not looking at anyone in particular. Just you feel depressed. Which part is it? Which side is it? This is very important. This is why we teach you these things because there are practical aspects of it that the Chinese did, did, don't explain to you. You depressed. You feel depressed. Which side is it? Hmm? Which side? Life has only two sides: to emptiness. Or wonderful existence. Which side does depression belong? You don't know. I just told you. Huh? Wonderful existence. He only <laughs> the abbot says existence. He he doesn't dare say wonderful existence. It should be wonderful existence, mind you. When you have wisdom, then you see it as wonderful existence. If you don't have wisdom, that's why you say it's depression. <laughs> His existence is actually de depression, right? That's what he means. So, so clearly, he doesn't have wisdom yet. Okay, that's why he sees it as depression, as existence. Is that clear? He can't deny. I'm depressed. I feel depressed. Okay, so what do you do to deal with depression? Go see a shrink who's also depressed. By the way, you know that most shrinks I know are all depressed. I haven't met a shrink who's not depressed. I haven't met a crazy. Patient doctor who's not crazy. I'm making and poking fun of one, one of my disciples. Yes, four. Uh, you go to the other side of the emptiness. You go to the other side of emptiness. See again, this woman here. There's an embrace true emptiness. You only embrace his emptiness. <laughs> Get to the point. See the range. <laughs> See the range. <laughs> okay. So in practicality, you feel depressed. It's existence, according to him. Okay. It's existence. So far, so good. What do you do? In order to cope with this depression, what do you do? If you stay here, you're going to be in trouble because it's real to you. Yeah, it's here. Existence meaning you feel depressed. You feel bad. This on this side. Okay, you being taught. You're being trained to go from existence to emptiness. Let's say by deciding a Buddhist name. Are you able to do that? Not yet, right? Can you? Not yet. 
What you do is that if you feel depressed and you reach a level, the skill level where you can empty yourself, who's feeling depressed? You, yes? You feel depressed. They say, I am not feeling good. I am depressed. There's an I there. Yes? So this is very scientific, folks. You, 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 you <laughs> don't, uh, don't underestimate. This is very scientific. I feel depressed. Okay? So in order to go from, from existence to emptiness, you empty yourself. There's no I. So you enter this samadhi that where the I disappears. So therefore, depression, where is depression? Poof! No more depression. No one ever explained this for the Buddhists, the Chinese Buddhists, by the way. I never read any, kind, any such explanation in Korean, in Chinese, in Vietnamese. Okay? It's the first time I explained to you in English. So far, so good? So this is where your spiritual training matters. It's consequential. It's important because when you practice reciting Buddha's name, reciting mantras, okay, uh, meditating, reciting sutras, bowing to Buddhas and so forth, it's wonderful existence on this side, isn't it? And you need to be cognizant of the fact that as you're training in this wonderful existence side, you need to bring yourself to the level where it matters ultimately to you because at some point in time, if you're struck with depression, you're afflicted by depression, and you realize you're suffering, your depression is making you suffer, then you can choose to use your training to go from existence to emptiness to escape your depression. Is, does it make sense to you? You see, if I did, I, 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 uh, all these years, is to illustrate that point. And you Chinese people followed all the Chinese teaching, that's all you know. But until today, I explained to you how to cope with depression. Your skill, your training can help you escape depression. That's a rather low level I just described to you. It's a much, much more. Okay, well, I don't want to overwhelm you. Looking at your levels, I don't want to overwhelm you. There's a lot more. Because I only explain to you existence. I haven't explained to you wonderful existence yet. I only explain to you emptiness. I have not explained to you true emptiness yet. I only use a subset of wonderful existence and subset a tiny portion of true emptiness to help you cope with something which is a real plague in our society nowadays, whether it's in China, Japan, Korea, Vietnam. So many people, old and young, particularly young people, suffer from depression and they're totally at the mercy. They're overwhelmed. There's nothing they can do. No one can do. Okay? Only through meditation. Ultimately, you can empty yourself. Okay? Next low level. Those you who are saying, but I can't empty myself. What my next best resort? Does that interest you? If you're not interested, I'm going to stop. No interest. I want you to help you see your progression.
No, no inches. Okay, that's moving on. Yes. What? My master. What? 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 Did I hear something? Some <laughs> Huh? What? 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 Hey, calm down. Settle down. <laughs> okay. So I can't. I look like I can't go. Huh? <laughs> okay. If you cannot empty yourself, next level is what I'll teach you. Next level, because there's some people here, of many of my disciples cannot empty themselves yet. Not the next level. I'm teaching you, I'm reminding you what you're capable of. Those you you are able to empty yourself, you don't have to empty yourself. You can do the next, not as good level, just for the heck of it. Would you be interested in learning? No? No, no? Yes? <sighs> Donation basket, pass around. <laughs> okay? Next level. If you cannot empty yourself yet, let me describe to you. Next level, remember, depression is what? You feel bad, yeah? You feel sad. You feel sleepy, yeah? You feel unmotivated. You feel low energy, yeah? You don't feel good, ultimately, yeah? The word is feel. Common denominator is feel. So next low level, before you can empty yourself, is cut off the feeling. And you go to empty feeling. It's no empty self, but you have a feeling of sadness, feeling of feeling bad. You cut off that feeling bad. You go to zero feeling, which is quite close to emptiness. Who's in charge of your life? Let me ask you. Why do you allow those depression ghosts and manic ghosts to rule your life? Hmm? Only because you don't know how to regain, to regain control, to wrestle, wrestle control back. Okay, so in this training here we're giving you is first measure is empty yourself so that you have existence of depression, you empty it so that is zero depression, it's empty depression. Is it clear? You cannot do that yet, I know most of you cannot, cannot do that yet. Many of you in Korea, in the U.S., are able to recognize, I am having the blues. I'm not feeling good. Pay attention. When you're not feeling good, you can enter somebody and those not good feelings would go away. If you feel sad, the key word is feel. Are you listening? When you feel sad, you feel depressed, yeah? You enter, you cross your legs and enter this no feeling samadhi, that's almost emptying yourself. That's how you recover. You do not allow your sadness to take over your life. Otherwise, you are a victim of your depression.
Okay, so let me save the wonderful existence and true emptiness for maybe in 10 years I explain to you when you're there. Can I elaborate more? I promise the, the six of you here today, eight, nine of you here, uh, 10 of you here today, and uh, 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 get a list of the people present today. <laughs> in 10 years, if you <laughs> close enough, I explain to you how to do wonderful existence and true emptiness to deal with your, your challenges in life. Any questions from JC? Yeah, go ahead. Master, I have a question. Yeah, about depression or affliction? <laughs> Everything. Everything. Okay. Yeah. Ask. Yeah, so uh, you said. Uh, you can enter the no feeling samadhi. Yes. Can you there? How can you? Yeah. Cross your legs. I see. Thank you, you cross your legs. And you meditate. You can enter. When you feel sad, you remember. When you notice, when you're feeling sad, you don't complain. You say, this is Sien An's fault. I mean, Sien An's fault. I mean, <laughs> don't blame it on anyone else. Sien Pu's fault. Okay, no, it's no one's fault. You say, I'm feeling sad. It's my fault. So you cross your legs instead of lying down and rest and say, I'm not feeling, oh, I don't feel like getting up. I'm going to lie here. And you know, no, no, you do that. That's for losers. Okay, when you're feeling sad, you're feeling depressed, you're feeling sad, you cross your legs and you meditate and you say, I want to enter this no feeling thing. I'm telling, I'm telling you, XF, that you can do that. And your sad feelings will evaporate bit by bit by bit by bit. All right? You can fight, meaning that if you do that, let me tell you, for you in particular, because you ask the question, these people don't have that problem. The rest of the world doesn't have that problem. I'm only talking to you, okay? It doesn't apply to anyone else. If your, set, your, 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 your bad feeling this much, when you do that XF, here's what happens to it. It shrinks. Okay? And you, if you keep on doing that, I'm very, very specific, and keep doing that, of course, at first, you don't believe in yourself. I'm telling you that you can do it. Okay? You, yourself, personally, can enter this samadhi that all the sad feeling will vanish. Hey, white mama, I mean, white hair mama. <laughs> okay, got that? You can do it. And then eventually, they'll crank it up. Don't, don't have a victory lap yet. Enjoy it while you still can. But eventually, they will escalate. All right? Your obstruction will escalate. That's why it's called wonderful existence. Do not be so proud. Do not be so full of yourself because the obstruction will increase. Nothing is static, folks. Only losers would say that, you know, think of life as static. It's not. It's, it's in flux. It changes constantly. So the moment, you know, I'm teaching her that she can handle it, 
at times he can handle it. But don't be surprised because of the nature of wonderful existence that they will crank it up, which give you a chance to crank it up yourself. What is that called? It's similar to weight training. We lift heavier and heavier because we need the heavier resistance to grow stronger and bigger. Yeah? Same principle. Don't bemoan and say, oh my God, why, why so difficult? Of course, it will, they occasionally will crank it up. That's why it's the nature of wonderful existence. They will crank it up. Okay? And therefore, give you a chance to grow stronger, to do it better and better and better and faster. Okay? And with to the ex exception that, that eventually, because it's called wonderful existence, they're so strong that you cannot overwhelm them. That's when, that's what happens. You call the old abbot. <laughs> Say, Master, I cannot do it. That's when you get help. Okay? What I'm trying to tell you is that in our world, we let you take care of it first yourself so that you build your muscles. Okay? Here and here. But they will, I'm warning you, there will come a point in time when you, it's way beyond you, that's when help is available. If you ask prematurely, we ignore you. But give it a good tug and work hard will help you grow. Have no fear. Buddha is here, yeah. as it rhymes. Wei Mount. Um, yeah, but I, I was going to ask the same question. Uh, if you have strategies for us on how to take out the filling part for the rest of us. The rest of you who cannot end your feelings? That's why. That's the next level. Yeah. Yeah? Next level. Okay? Yeah. Remember, yeah. the notable level is when you can go from existence of depression, as you use one example. Mental illness is the nature of all mental illnesses, by the way. You have existence of this problem, mental problem. That's existence. You can empty yourself so that it cannot bite, has nowhere to bite. There's no one who's feeling bad, no one who's depressed. Okay? That's our training. That's what you, monks and nuns, I expect you to get there in our world. No excuses. We invest in you so that you can get there and beyond. Okay? Next level. And many of you are there already. That's why I explained it to you that you cannot empty yourself yet, but you can empty your feelings. Okay? And we explained that already. And finally, next level is a big range here where you cannot empty your feelings, okay? But you can, can compress, compress it so that so that your bad feelings are not as overwhelming. You can do something about it yourself. If you, the way they attack you this much intensity, okay, it's very much like taking some aspirin and it will compress it a little bit. That's what it does. That's your skill level. Depending on your skill level, this is why, this is why we keep on stressing improvement, 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 because depending on your skill level, you could compress that. Those bad feelings, okay? From low level here, first diana, a little bit. Second diana, a little bit more. Third, fourth, 
and so forth. Up, 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 up here. When you get to this level, that's when you get zero feelings. You can cut off your feelings. We're very precise. We don't talk. You have to train yourself so that you can do it yourself. Like many before you have. I notice you've been with me for a long time. I never explained it to you until we, re we get to wonderful existence and true emptiness. Stop here today. Thank you, everyone. Okay? Did I answer your question? You keep the short question, you keep on practicing as you improve. The bad feelings will decrease. Okay? You won't feel as bad when you cross your legs and meditate. If you were this depressed and you cross your legs and meditate instead of sitting there and sleep, then you reduce your bad feelings. And your skill level, depending on your, depending on your skill level, it compresses the bad feelings. Thank you, Ty. Okay. You're welcome, little old girl. Any other questions on Waybound? I have a last quick question. Thank you, Master. Uh, so what's the difference between uh, feeling uh, manic versus feeling depressed? Same thing. Any feeling, uh, we call it manic, we call it uh, paranoia, we call it whatever, it's just a label. You understand? It doesn't matter what the psychologists, the shrink call it, it's just a feeling. Any feeling you have, okay, you can, you can empty the feelings. All right? So that's why do not get, get uh, do not, do not, um, do not panic and say, oh my God, I feel bad again. No. When you keep, the key word is feel, when you have this feeling here, whatever the feeling is, you can empty it. Is it clear? That's all. You didn't know before that you can empty it. You have the ability, but you don't know how to, that you're supposed to do that. Now I explain to you. Hmm? If you go, to example, to many Hinayana temples, I don't care whatever it is, wherever Thailand or Myanmar or Sri Lanka and so forth, the teachers are not train on wonderful existence and true emptiness. That's why they struggle with, how, with her knowing how to cope with these various issues. They will not. So what this section here is very important, okay? And we, uh, Peter, you could consider uh, editing it, cutting it out so that we don't, uh, we, we charge people for it. It's worth paying for it, let me tell you. If I were depressed, I were manic, I were, you know, uh, 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 have anxiety issues, huh, huh, anyone today here, huh, <laughs> okay, uh, don't blame it on, on, on your parents, don't blame it on your wife, don't blame it on your husband, okay, it's you, you recognize your feeling and you empty it, and if you step further, step higher, you recognize you are manic, you empty yourself, who's manic? No one's manic. No one's depressed. Yes, Seven. Thank you, Master. Uh, we will file this away for our YouTube channel members only content future. This is, let me tell you, this is, this is worth a lot of money. This is invaluable to the world. 
and I've been very patient. Uh, I started by helping people who have mental issues like, like uh, mania or depression and so forth uh, 12 years ago, 15 years ago. On Saturday night, we have a mentor session there is to help such people. Never explain anything until today. It's manageable. You don't have to be a victim. And the only way I know of that does not, you don't need to use meds, okay? And you know that uh, it's something you must do yourself. You cannot lie on a couch and talk to people because that's not going to solve the problem. You have to get out of range. You have to empty your feelings. You have to empty yourself. That's the only way. Match is not going to help it. People telling you, no, you stop, just be nicer to your husband. It's not going to help it. It's, it's like a band-aid. Okay? It will come back. But the training here you're receiving, the just development of the skill set here, will help you. That's the only way possible. Of course, there's other ways. But that's not today's thing. That's part of the rest of wonderful existence. Yes, JMT. I know you go by a came and go kick ya. You got out when the camp on the lawn, you came and told him, and you know, okay, three way back ya, I mean that. Nói ai là người mà bị bị khổ như vậy? Ai mà làm tôi khổ mà tôi là ai vậy? Thì mình cứ quán cái đó hoài, có phải vậy được không? Go. Let me explain to him Vietnamese and you have to learn Vietnamese. We're not going to translate this. Okay. Um, khi mà con ngồi mà cái 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 cái, cái cảm giác nó lớn lên như vậy đó, cái trình độ của con đó, thì con chỉ không cái thân, cái ngã của mình thôi. Không cần biết. Không cần biết nó là cái gì hết Cái thọ Cái tưởng Cái thức hả? Nó khởi lên mình nhận nó là cái thọ Mình nhận nó là cái 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 tư tưởng Thì mình em thi mình nó Nó biến mất ngay lập tức Đó trình độ của con Hiểu chưa Hiểu Not for you Have to be Vietnamese <cười> Again, Peter, Vietnamese paying section. Oh, thank you, Master. We, uh, I work with Aha. We have a, you know, a library of free materials and subscribed materials. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Okay, everyone, thank you. Rebirth transference.